Ever hear the term three's the crowd? Well, I'm a big fan of Neapolitan ice cream and that has three flavors, so I think it can work. Three also seemed to be a lucky number when a couple of weeks ago, my best friend Sam from DIY Huntress drove out to California with me to go collaborate with our buddy Chris from Four Eyes Furniture. Our goal was to build a single piece of furniture that somehow combined all three of our unique styles and talents. Check out what we came up with. This video is sponsored by Dap Products. When we got to Chris's shop, we spotted a coffee table that Mike from Modern Builds had collaborated with Chris on earlier. All three of us loved the relief cut idea, so we incorporated it into our design. Make sure you head to his channel to check out the original. We were working with a pretty tight timeline, so while Sam and I were driving to California, Chris started to assemble the top and shelf of the coffee table. He just released a video today too, where he goes into more detail about the building process. Head over there for all the details. Sam has a really great eye for patterns and textures on designs, so we let her take charge of that part of the build. We tossed around a few ideas as a team and then we settled on this intersecting geometric line design. Chris also uses the Craig ACS adaptive cutting system in his shop. We figured the track and the plunge saw would be the perfect tools to make those parallel lines. If this is the first Pneumatic Datic video that you've seen, welcome! Make sure you subscribe so you get notified every time I release a new video. When it came time to turn the table and start making the intersecting lines, it got a little tricky. Sam had to slow down her cuts and make sure that the round circular saw blade didn't cut through the previous lines. Fortunately, Sam is a pro and so we were able to get a super crisp and clean design. With the pattern cut into the top, Chris gave the surface a quick sand. And it was my turn. Chris had seen how I had bleached the red birch from my swinging terrarium videos a couple of weeks ago, and he thought it might be a cool technique to try on this white oak we were using. I first started with a two-part wood bleach system from Zinser. I used a sponge to apply part A, and I had to make sure that I really worked it into those grooves. After allowing that to dry for about 15 minutes, I applied part B with a different sponge. Just like the red birch from the terrarium, the oak didn't get quite as light as we were wanting as well. But that's okay, I came prepared. I decided to show Chris and Sam my hair lightener trick. I mixed up a strong batch of powdered hair lightener using 50 volume developer. You can purchase hair developer and powdered lightener either online or at your local Sally's Beauty Supply store, even if you don't have a cosmetology license. We set up some plastic drop cloths and then took the table rounds outside. I applied a nice heavy coat of the hair lightener, making sure to really work it into those grooves. To help prevent the product from evaporating and to help it lift or lighten more quickly, we then covered the tabletops with another plastic drop cloth. While the wood was outside bleaching and doing its thing, we went back inside and now it was Chris's turn to show us how to make his signature four eye style tapered legs. Chris does more traditional style joinery than I do and he's definitely a table saw guy. He helped us set up a Rockler tapering jig to help make those angled cuts more precisely and safely. His video is going to go way more into detail about the legs if you're interested. Are you liking what you see? Make sure you tap that like button just down below. Once we had the leg pieces cut, it was time to assemble. I brought a bottle of Dab Carpenter's glue and Rapid Fuse CA glue to show Chris and Sam my two-step gluing up process. Like I mentioned before, we were moving quickly on this build. I applied a moderate amount of the Carpenter's glue and then added a few drops of Rapid Fuse. Then when I pressed the legs together, the rapid fuse can set quickly and work almost as a clamp while the carpentered glue has time to dry. We didn't even bother clamping this complex acute angle. Instead, we just held it together with some painter's tape. A couple hours later, when the glue was fully cured, we decided to reinforce the joint with some splines. 
A spline is when you make a cut perpendicular to your joint and then insert and glue another piece of wood to give you more gluing surface and help hold the pieces together. The legs were looking really good, but there was just a few small defects that I needed to fill with some Plastic Wood X from DAP. Plastic Wood X is my favorite wood filler because it has this colored indicator that lets you know when it's dry and ready to sand. It also happens to sand better than almost any other wood filler that I've ever used. Once the legs were assembled, we went back outside and turned our attention back to the finish of the tabletops. After allowing the hair lightener to do its job for about two hours, we used a hose to spray it all off. The tabletops were already milled to their final dimensions, so I hurried and dried the surface to avoid any warping from the excess water. The wood dried quickly, and then I used a 220 grip sandpaper to knock down the raised grain. It was time to apply stain, and now we were back in Sam's territory. One of the best things about bleached wood is it shows the true tone of whatever stain or finish you put on top of it. For the largest part of the pattern, Sam decided to go with a natural oak color, ironically. Since we knew the base of the table was going to be black, I helped Sam apply some black India ink to the edges of both the tabletop as well as the lower shelf. For more details on the staining process, make sure to check out Sam's video. One area that both Sam and Chris had told me they wanted to know a little bit more about was spraying a finish with an HVLP sprayer. I spray everything I can, I love it. We wanted to keep the light bleached wood as white as possible, so we decided to go with a water-based polyurethane. HVLP, or High Volume Low Pressure Sprayers, come in almost any price point. You can get some as inexpensive as about $80. I shared with them a few finishing tips, like making sure that you thin your finish to the recommended viscosity. Since I spray so many of my projects, I have a little bit higher quality system from Fuji Spray. I'll include an affiliate link in the description box if you want to check it out. We went back outside and I laid down the first coat. I'm definitely not a spraying expert, but I try to show them techniques that I use to help get a better finish. For example, you always want to spray the side or edges of a piece before spraying the top. And as long as your spray pattern is adjusted correctly, you want to spray about six to eight inches from the surface. I sprayed two coats of clear polyurethane. Then for my third coat, I mixed in a tiny bit of purple acrylic paint just to help cool out any of the golden tones in the wood. I talk more about controlling warmth when finishing wood in my stair tread chair video. I finally got the paint gun in Chris's hands and let him give it a shot. I'm not sure if super widespread legs help with technique, but you never know, I could be wrong. He did a great job, and once everything was dry, we were able to attach the legs, and we were done. You might be saying, wait a second, those aren't tapered legs, those are hairpins. Chris had a set of hairpin legs with a shelf kit that he wanted to try out first. After taking a couple of photos, we swapped them out for the tapered legs that we had made. It took some creativity, but I think we were able to incorporate all three of our styles into this one table. I'm not sure who's the chocolate, who's vanilla, and who's the strawberry, but I think our Neapolitan table is pretty cool. If you like quirky design, I got a couple of other building project videos for you to try. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe and join the Cool Kids Club. I have the best subscribers on the planet. Thanks for watching, guys.